Fractal. This guy here, Jordan Bain, he is a real estate agent that also runs an agency, which is a digital, let's call it brand positioning agency that helps real estate agents position their brand, most likely using new media, social media. The reason I like this guy is he's not an over, like in real estate, we've got the biggest liar gets the job. And in digital agency, we have a lot of people that spin a lot of shit telling people that you're going to pick up hundreds of leads and that you're going to pick up lots and lots of listings because you've got this unique thing that no one else has. If you ask a consumer a thousand times, do you want to get a price update on your home? Eventually someone says yes, but that's quite a big difference from attracting a high probability seller that's actually in the cycle of potentially getting an appraisal because they want to sell their house. I love the fact, Jordan, that for you, you believe that social media is a lot more about brand building than actually ethical bribes to get someone to give you their name and their details for this random chance that they might be thinking of selling. So um, welcome, mate. Welcome. Thank you, and mate. I'd love, Jordan, I'd, <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love you. We, we got interrupted with the internet issue. What's the difference between boosting and Facebook ads? Boosting and Facebook ads. Let's keep this one short and sharp. Everyone is, is well and truly aware of obviously the big blue button that appears at the bottom of the Facebook post when they, when they, when they put a post up. Essentially... In, in short terms, boosting is is optimized for engagement only, right? So most agents, of course, won't really know the, few, the, the major difference between the two, but boosting is done on facebook.com. So, okay, so that's where your Facebook page, that's where you do majority or all of your posting, of course. There is actually a second platform called the, the business manager or some people would refer to it as the ads manager, either or there's no, no right or wrong. There's two components to it anyway. But essentially, it's a completely separate platform, okay? Now, boosting, which most agents will be well and truly familiar with, I'm sure I can almost guarantee that, that everyone who's watching today has at least attempted a boost at least once in their, their journey or their career. Essentially, as I said before, boosting is optimized for, for engagement only. So likes, comments, shares, things like that, which is great. It makes, the, makes you feel really good. You know, you, boost, you might run your boost for you know, seven to 10 days and it comes back and you've got all these likes and comments and tags and all these video views but at the end of the day how many of those people are actually in real estate mode how many of them aren't your mum and dad and best friends and whoever else right so boosting is is simply just optimized to make you feel good okay it is quite simply a revenue raising scheme done by facebook and facebook don't sugarcoat this they'll tell you straight away if you speak to any of the um, ad support team that will tell you it's just there to, to help people get started, okay? Whereas with the ads manager or, or Facebook ads, business.facebook.com, if anyone wants to look it up after this, um, this video, um, completely separate platform. You can optimize um, so much more. You can go so much deeper on audiences. You can split test ads against each other to see which ones perform better. Um, it, it's just a high, high level of advertising. You can, you can just go so much deeper on, on, on the ads manager or running Facebook ads than what you can with boosting. Um, as I said, Jordan, boosting very simply revenue raising. J Jordan, so what you're saying to me is Facebook are unashamedly just making it easy to get more money. And listen, you know, the truth of the matter, this happens in every sector, Every like just walking, walking through, uh, you know, uh, 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 Woolworths, the way that they've got stuff positioned at eye level means something is more likely to be bought than not bought. So we totally get it. You know, it's a marketing, you know, plan, a marketing strategy. But I want to ask you, if you're a serious agent and you turn around and they've listened to what you've said and they thought, you know what, man, I've, I've got this, man, I've just got, I've got this endorphin hit that I get because I wake up in the morning and I just see the share like comments and it makes me feel good. But today they turn around and they think, you know, hang on a second here. How much is this actually becoming valuable to me as a real estate agent? I mean, I'm just curious, like, can the average agent circumnavigate Facebook ads manager? Look, it'd be difficult. It, it, it is more tricky, a lot more tricky. Hence why the boosting button is there because it is so straightforward. You punch the button, you put put a small audience in or a geographical audience in, you give it a budget. It does all the work for you. Um, as you said, navigating the, the, the ads manager is a little tricky um, if you don't know where, where to start. But 
like anything, right? You know, you can you can jump on YouTube and it'll take you five minutes to learn how to do it. You do it once, and the the short term stress you might feel of trying to navigate the ads manager will be completely outweighed by the level of um, you know conversions and optimization you have by using the correct platform. So yeah, to answer your question, I won't sugarcoat, I won't bullshit anyone. It is a little bit difficult to navigate it. You know, it took me a little while when I first started really understanding it. But there's so much in there that you don't need to use as well. As long as you know where to go and what to use, it's pretty straightforward. But it sounds like it's worth it because if you were going to spend, say, 50 bucks, 50 bucks boosting versus 50 bucks on Ads Manager, you're going to get more bang for your buck on Ads Manager. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ultimately, you'll probably end up with, if you're putting a video up or a post up, whatever it might be, again, your, your immediate gratification, of course, we all like that immediate gratification, might be less because keeping in mind that your audience size is going to be slightly smaller, potentially, again, disclaimer there, might be slightly smaller using the ads manager, but it's a specific audience. It's a real estate audience who's who who wants to hear from you, who's going to engage with your content, not the old lady who's going to get carried out in a pine box or you know, the, 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 the tenants who are in, who live in your area, who couldn't give two shits just because you put in a cool car in your video, right? So ultimately you, your, your engagement might be slightly less. However, it's vital to know that the, the engagement that you're getting is going to be so much more hypercentric to who you're trying to target. Um, so again, the, people just don't like the immediate gr- lack of gratification. If they put a post up or put it, run an ad through the ads manager and it only comes back with 10 likes and they go, oh shit, that didn't work. But they expose themselves to 3,000 people potentially in their area who are in or approaching real estate mode in the, in the near future. So it just the, 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 the bang for buck, as you to use your term, far, far superior. Um, and once you really learn the ins and outs of it, you'll, you'll see that very quickly. All right. Jordan, um, generating leads through social. I get asked by gym members, man, why aren't I getting more leads through my social media. What's your response to that? Yeah, I love this one because ultimately it's it's all people want, right? They they we look at social media as a prospecting tool, which is great and and so you should. However, people are just incredibly impatient, right? They they put a post up, they put a quick call to action of send me your number and I'll give you an appraisal and then they scratch their head as to why no one's contacted them. You know, it's just absolutely crazy. At the end of the day, what I'll do is I'll give you give you the listeners a, probably three quick fire tips as to why. Number one, you're not targeting a specific audience, okay? You're just targeting everyone and anyone and hoping for the best. Crossing your fingers, hoping someone comes back and contacts you. So number spray, one- Spray and pray. You've got oh, a cannon, you go. you, you yep. hit, you've thr- hit it up there and you said, man, let's see what happens. Yeah, just like your BDA or your, F, you know, your farm area, right? At the end of the day, you're not trying to target 30, 50, 100,000 homes. You try and target a small area, become dominant in that area. It's exactly the same with Facebook. What you want to try and do is target a specific and go deeper on that audience rather than going wider. So number one, you're not targeting a specific audience. Number two, you have no level of frequency, right? So at the end of the day, to, to give people an understanding in terms of real estate terms or a real estate analogy, it's like putting a, a flyer in someone's letterbox asking if they want an appraisal and then not backing it up for another six months. Do you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, you're just one of a thousand agents that's shown up in their in their letterbox that day or that week or that month, that year, whatever it might be. So they're going to forget about you very quickly if you don't back that up. Exactly the same with the prospecting call. If you call someone, what are those stats? You know, 82% of people don't follow up with a, with, a, with a lead. It's like that. It's exactly the same. So if you put a post out, and you don't back it up the following day or the next day or whatever it might be that week, they're going to quickly forget about you. And I, I guess a quick disclaimer here is as agents, there's a very fine line of integrity that we're, we're constantly tiptoeing between showing up too much and just straight up pissing people off or not showing up enough and then being forgotten about, right? It's the age old trick of what's the level of frequency? What's that sweet spot? But number two is you don't have a level of frequency attached to it. Again, you're just putting a post out, hoping someone contacts you as a result of it. They don't know who the hell you are. They don't trust you. Why are they going to give you their details if, if you're only showing up once, right? The third one, uh, which is a really good one, you have a shit call to action, right? You're right. making it too complicated. There's too much fluff. At the end of the day, again, you're one of a thousand agents in your area putting stuff on Facebook. Make it simple. Make it really, really easy and, and, and with less friction, path of least resistance, make it really easy for them to contact you if they want something from you or if they can extract value from you. So number one, target a specific, you're not targeting a specific audience. Number two, 
there's no level of frequency. Number three, you have a shit call to action. That's that's probably the nuts and bolts of why you're not generating leads. Well, Jordan, what are your favorite calls to action that you've seen a, a good calls to action that are simple and effective? Well, it's it's it, it's it's probably no different to what a lot of people are already doing. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to understand if, if I'm a homeowner in, in your area, right, Tommy? If I'm a homeowner in your area, if I'm thinking about selling my property before... Before I give two shits about what your fees are, your marketing is, how great you are, how great your team is, your reputation, whatever else, I just want to know what the property value of my property is, right? So I'm not going to sugarcoat this too much and say there's there's a really cool or a magic wand silver bullet call to action to use. Just identify what your audience wants or, or what 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 value proposition you can offer and then just give it to them simply. Just understand that you've usually got two or three seconds to capture and more importantly, hold their attention on, on the news feed. So make sure that your call to action is simple, easy to understand and stands out. So it could be as simple as if you want, like, again, I know we were talking shit about people before about, you know, click here to, click here to get a sales appraise, whatever it might be. That's fine to a degree if you have a certain level of frequency in it and to a specific audience, not just blasting it to everyone. Um, but so a, little, a, little, a little bit, it sounds like to me what you're saying, and I hate simplifying things, that I think sometimes when you simplify things, people get it, that Gary Vaynerchuk analogy, which is jab, 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 right hook, brand, 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 brand. I know you now call to action. Is that what you're Bingo. saying? Yeah, hundred percent. Gary V is the, per the perfect analogy there. He just keeps giving, giving, giving. And then again, but, but it, it comes to that specific audience. Gary V is super lucky. Tom Panos is super lucky. You guys have big audiences. The people engage with you automatically. The, the average Joe Blow working at XYZ Real Estate in the eastern suburbs or whatever it might be doesn't have a huge audience, right? So at the end of the day, you've got to jab a lot more than what Tom and, and what and what Gary V do because they don't know you yet. They don't trust you yet. You've got to build that credibility, build the authority over time and then go for the hook. But absolutely, ja the, Gary V is a master of this stuff, right? So whatever he says is, is usually going to be pretty accurate. Now, listen, websites... You know, like you got agents that work, you know, Ray White, you know, Hookers, Rain and Horn, or even independent offices, right? So you got these lead agents, and a lot of these lead agents now run their own effective business units, mm -hmm. right? I've noticed a tendency that many of these uh, have got their own little personal website. Like if I'm trading as, you know, I don't know, Ray White or Century 21, it's Tom, the Tom Panos team of Haberfield. What's your view of, websites slash a landing page which is a sort of a website yeah they're a bit of a I mean, they're a cool thing these days right i mean you look at you look at a lot of the, the the number one agents in the area or in in the country a lot of these people have their own websites and people are starting to feel empowered with all this this personalized uh, things going on in, in the in our industry at the moment but yeah absolutely i'm a big fan of personal websites or landing pages but it, it really comes down to Keeping it simple. This is a, a very common question that I get as well. Do I need a landing page? Do I need a website personally myself? At the end of the day, we need to understand the consumer, consumer behavior. So is, is, are you, do you build a website for yourself that displays your listings and sales and you know whatever else that comes with it? At the end of the day, if people want to see your listings and sales, they're going to go to realestate.com or domain.com or your, your, your agency website. So I wouldn't worry too much about creating a landing page or a website with your listings and sales. Sure, testimonials add a lot of effect there, but you want to keep your personal website short, sharp, and super, super clean, okay? So depending on what you're trying to do, again, if you're trying to generate leads, um, then make it very simple. You know, have a simple call to action on your website, a contact form or a booking calendar. You, know, you can go to calendly.com. It's a free software to use. You can create a new calendar and, and plug it into your personal website. So yeah, I'm a big fan of personal websites. But they do have a certain purpose. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend people getting a personalized website or a landing page unless you're directing people there for a specific reason. Uh, and personally, of course, my specific reason or what I try and encourage agents on is to try and use it as a, a lead funnel opposed to a, a, a website or a landing page. So direct people there to try and capture attention, but, but more so capture um, information and contact details and whatever else. Um, so keep it super, super simple. Oh, so, so Jordan, as you were speaking, I thought to myself, who's the number one agent I've interviewed in the last few months? 
and it was uh, Ben Collier, you know, right? Ara, and uh, I Googled him, right? I just Googled him. And what I get is I get the agency website. He works for the agency. And I also get um, his personal website. So I get b both of them, search result one, search result two. And what I've noticed is he's got here, nice, simple website, by the way, everyone. Nice, simple website, right? Nice, simple website. At the top, he's got browse properties, beachside, parkside, harborside, inner city. Then the second part of the website says meet our team, instant property estimate, suburb profiles, insights contact us and then he's got sign up for our weekly market insights which is an incredible report he provides every week right it's one of his hero hero community uh, communication pieces right so i can you know i can see i can see how this isn't bad this isn't bad but what you're saying is don't have a personal website to try and be realestate.com or domain have mm. a personal website to do other things. Yeah, give value. Correct. Right at the end of the day, that's what people want. People want value. So write a blog. At the end of the day, I don't know why why Tumblr is so quiet these days. You know, I mean, write a blog. People want to know what's happening in your area in the market. To use a Gary V line, be the mayor of your town. You know, talk talk about what's happening. Talk about what shops are being built or what cafes are are struggling and need support. Things like that. But also talk about the market and and, and what people want to hear. So. Use it as, as more of a, um, a specific value opportunity to your marketplace, opposed to trying to be like everyone else and compete with the, the real estate .coms and domain .coms. Because they're not going to they're not going to click on your website to browse your listings. At the end of the day, they want it. They want a place that they can see everyone's listings in one spot. It so, doesn't sound, Jordan. It doesn't sound right now. It should be the number one thing on your to do list as you embark down this path of improving your brand using social and digital, but it's something that you can do. Next question. Correct. If you are going to be running ads, what should have, what ads should you be running? Uh, it's a, an, a good one as well, because people's people have incredibly high, your audience, regardless of where you are, people are going to have incredibly high bullshit radars, right? So if something looks like an ad, I don't know what the numbers are. I think it's like 17,000 ads people are exposed to on a daily basis, or something, something crazy. So if something looks, sounds, speaks like an ad, your audience is going to scroll straight past it, okay? So think less advertising and, and, and take, again, take the Gary Vee product. We talk, keep talking about Gary Vee here, but be a bit more candid. So if you're trying to focus on personal branding, you know, don't do the standard, the profile shot, hands behind the back or hands in your pocket, big cheesy green with green with, you know, a brick wall behind you. At the end of the day, show you out in the field, show you with buyers and sellers. Use use an ad as an opportunity to get again, give value back, or more importantly, give education. Okay. So yes, you can take the straight up call to action approach and just try and get more leads, but advertising as well can be used as a education tool or a value proposition tool or really show people who you are. Okay. We I love working with people who um, you know, love just having a bit of a laugh. Like they'll stand out in the front, they'll be shopping, popping champagne with their buyers or whatever. And it looks a bit unreal estate because, you know, they've got their shirt buttoned down and they're having a laugh and they look, they've got a feral face or whatever it might be. But that's great because it shows people as, as human beings, right? It shows them that they're approachable and presentable. They're sure they're still professional. They obviously have some credibility to be able to be in that position. But be a bit more candid with your ads, okay? People, have, again, people have very high BS radars. So, Try and avoid it looking too much like an ad. So Canva is a big one. A lot of people, I see a lot of ad people just creating crap in Canva, right? Sure, it's a great tool, but within reason. Don't make it look too fancy or make it look too like an ad because people are just going to scroll straight past it because they're exposed to thousands of those every single day. So really just try and be, be relatable is what I'm kind of going for. Don't worry about it looking too fancy or too so, over the top. So Jordan, it's really interesting because... On, sa on Saturday, I'm doing an auction in Greenacre. I get my mobile phone. I give it to this young guy who's a PA, just started there two weeks. I say, mate, hold the mobile. Bit of me, bit of the crowd. There you go, live stream. Man, that was it. Mate, I had a look today. 350,000 
performance, incredible engagement. Now, I can tell you, Jordan, if I had a, oh, oh, I'm stable. You there, Jordan? Yeah, I've got, I can hear you. You're, you're frozen. You there, Jordan? I can still hear you. Yeah. Hello, 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 yeah. hello. Okay. I can hear. I can hear. You can hear me. Okay, Can't I'll just see. continue on. Yeah. Right. Okay, so Ju- that's all right. So, so Jordan, on Saturday, that this auction gets 350,000 views on a mobile phone, right? 350,000 views on a mobile phone. I know that if I had a video company there with all the flashing lights, all the mics set up, and I uploaded it later, man, I reckon I'd be lucky to get 5%. I think people 100%. are attracted to watching this guy be vulnerable and screw up in the moment. They're, yep, they're, they're, looking for, they're looking for you to screw up or they're looking for you to see what's going to happen here, right? Because you're human. At the end of the day, we're going to screw up. And who cares if you screw up or who cares if you look like a wanker, whatever, who cares? At the end of the day, they know we're not made of porcelain, right? And that's why the stigma with agents in the community at the moment is somewhat poor because we put ourselves on this ridiculous pedestal that we have to be professional and whatever else all the time. People are over that. Show, show the vulnerability, as you said. Show, screw up. Who cares about that stuff? Because it becomes relatable. And people want something different. They don't want more of the same. That's probably one thing to take note of. Be different, but actually back up the different. Um, don't just say you're different. But Mate, I want to ask you, let it, letterbox drops, you know, compared to Facebook ads or traditional marketing. What's the deal in your mind, like value for money? Great question, because ultimately there's, there's not a, lot, a great deal of difference, right? I mean, ultimately the, the, the biggest difference really between running Facebook ads, because ultimately I'm sure a lot of your listeners and, and, and a lot of people in real estate, Jim, focus heavily on traditional marketing being letterbox shops. Now, despite what a lot of my marketing says personally, I, I'm still a big fan of them, but typically in conjunction with social media ads, you can look at what, what I speak to a lot of uh, my clients about and what a lot, a lot of agents about is, the, the traditional letterbox is now a very saturated space. We can all agree with that. And, and everything generally looks somewhat similar when it hits the letterbox. So it's very hard to differentiate. If I'm a vendor in your area, very difficult to differentiate who's who in the zoo and whatever else. But what I've been talking a lot about recently is, is adapting the news feed as the new letterbox, or more importantly, the digital letterbox. Now, a lot of agents are probably sitting there going, well, everyone posts on Facebook. So it's just like it's a very saturated space as well. Incorrect. Because they're not, they're not, A, they're not doing it consistently. Two, they're not doing it effectively. C, or three, they're not targeting the right audience anyway. So if they are doing it effectively and consistently, they're not targeting the audience that you're going to be targeting if you do it correctly. So look at the news feed as the digital letterbox. I think um, I think even uh, Lisa Novak said this a little while ago as well. From yeah, she's, on, she's actually on watching right now. Is she great? Lisa, yeah. love your work. So... Um, so a big one, yeah, look at the, the news feed as the digital letterbox. It's so, so powerful. These days, people, most people get their information and news and whatever else from the news feed anyway, right? So use it as the digital letterbox. The difference between physical letterbox and digital letterbox is mainly, of course, is, is going to be precision, um, the opportunity to retarget people so or remarket to people for those who aren't aware of retargeting. We'll touch on that if we need to, Tommy. Uh, and of course, cost, right? The cost of printing and distribution through the roof. The time it takes to physically distribute them yourself, incredibly, you know, uh, uh, unreasonable to a degree, right? So with, with the news feed, of course, you can do it in a split second with absolute precision at an absolute fraction of the cost if you know how to do it correctly. So very, very similar. What I really want to just uh, emphasize here, though, is the news feed is the digital letterbox, okay? So look at them one in the same. All right, listen, man, I can tell the, the dropout rate just from the Zoom people is so low. Normally, when I'm doing a Zoom, I see a drop of around 20%. So, mate, credit to you. You're keeping, oh, people, in, you're keeping people engaged. I reckon what we'll do, Jordan, is we, 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 do, we, we go again. Good, so we're getting some good, good, nice, fantastic message. Thanks, Raj. For, uh, I can't see the Facebook messages, but I'm sure they're all going to be very positive. Now, listen, um, I want to... I wanna, uh, let's let's do again something in uh, in April because what I want to touch on, if I can, I want to talk about you know number one um, retargeting, which mm. I think it needs time. I want to talk about that, and you somehow have, I mean, you, you you've worked out some algorithm because you do show up, you do show up in people's feeds, right? Um, and relentlessly, that's the, first thing. the second, 
Yeah. yeah, so we want to find out what you're doing there. The second thing is I want to touch on more strategies on maximizing your engagement on social. I just yeah. think that that's an ongoing issue that people want. I want to also talk about, you know, this metaverse and how you think real estate agents will play a, a part in this future metaverse. I don't even know what it really means, but I want to touch on that. And uh, anyone that wants to hit Jordan Bain up, by the way, I'm not plugging the guy. Mate, I want to let you know, I'm not plugging the guy. So it's very, very clear. I don't receive a single cent having Jordan on here. I don't clip the ticket. There's no joint venture. There's nothing. All I'm doing, I'm doing what Gary V says, mate. Just add value. Mm -hmm. Just add value to the audience out there. Just keep giving information. And um, yeah, so how, how about we do that? But if they do want to get onto you, if they do want to get onto you, can I ask you, what is it? Is it the website? Yeah, so Jordan, Jordan Bain, J-O-I-D-A-N, uh, Bain, B-A-I-N dot I-O. So I for indigo, O for octopus. Or J you know, socials, Jordan Bain underscore is my Instagram. Otherwise, I'm sure I'm going to hit everyone's news feeds some point this afternoon or today anyway. So you'll see me. Otherwise, Facebook or Instagram, you know where to find me. Um, or Jordan Bain dot I-O is the website. You can, there's a you know, contact form and calendar and stuff there if need be All as well. Right. But appreciate Rick it, Tommy. Ricky's saying the man's good. I, I get retargeted by Jordan every week. Uh, <laughs> Kerry Ann is saying Jason. By the way, Kerry Ann, it's not Jason, it's Jordan, but that's just a side issue. <laughs> it's a J, do, we you, always get that. Do, you, do you suggest the best way to understand what we need to do is YouTube? How do we use this uh, platform so we can use it to generate? Listen, big question, Kerry Ann, mm. big question. But hey, you can find anything on YouTube if you're patient enough and you've got the time to do it. Um, but we'll touch on more of it. Um, Jacqueline, thank you so much. Very good marketing ideas. Uh, yes, yeah, so Kerry Ann's been nice to say, sorry, Jordan. It's Jordan. Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> Thanks, hey, Kerry listen, Ann. brother. Love your work. Listen, can we leave it at that? Let's do that. All right, guys and girls signing up. Facebook, thank you so much. Big apology. This was the false start three times today, but we got there in the end. Awesome work. Thanks a lot. See you, Jordan.